Bryce from Married at First Sight Australia uh, joins us uh, via Skype. Hey, Bryce. Morning, guys. How are you? We're good. How's everything going in Australia? Like you're, you're a radio guy um, before you went on the show. Are you now unemployable or are the job offers coming in for more radio? It's the biggest question I keep getting asked, apart from am I a dickhead? Um, <laughs> it's basically I'm at a point where I'm currently not working full time. I'm on a deal with a radio network here, but by no means am I locked into it long term. So um, Melissa and I have just signed a podcast deal. So we're actually going to be documenting, you could say, our relationship, what it actually is, not what it was actually shown on Married oh, at First Sight. Would that look and, different, do you think, Bryce? <laughs> a hell of a lot different. Right. Let's just put it out that way. So you 100% believe that producers put words into your mouth and you would come across totally different if you got to edit it? Uh, not put words into my mouth. Um, I own that. Some of the things that I did say did come out of my mouth. We all saw it. But, uh, look, I've got confirmation that we were targeted and set up by producers from a mole within production. So it's a small world, the media here in Australia, as it would mm, be in New Zealand. And yeah. I've got some mutual friends that had a very close friend working on the editing team and uh, decided to let slip on a drunk night out what was actually going on. So I thank oh. them for that. All right. Well, Bryce, we've got, none of us have been sort of watching this show and we've got deep regret about that now because it's become just this massive talking point here in New Zealand and here in Australia. And whenever I go on Daily Mail, I see a story about you and you're definitely like the villain of the series. But Caitlin, who we've got here, who you did a video message for yesterday from Cameo.com, yeah. <laughs> uh, her and her flatmates have been absolutely obsessed with it. She she can't stand you. <laughs> Not the biggest fan. How come? Um, I could probably speak on behalf of myself and maybe a lot of the female population, just for the yep. way that obviously you were portrayed on the show um, and the whole gaslighting thing. So this is new to me, this whole gaslighting term. So I'd love to know your explanation of it because we, I've heard of 20 different explanations. We Gaslighting, we talked about this before, is kind of like when you say something and then – whatever the person's response is, it makes them sound like they're a bit crazy. So I guess in your situation, watching it from an audience's point of view, mm -hmm. everything that Melissa would say was turned around back on her. Um, and then when she would ask you something, questions weren't really exactly answered either. So I suppose, Bryce, if you said now, Caitlin, you're full of shit. You're, 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 you're crazy. That girl's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she saw it with her own eyes. I absolutely agree with Caitlin. I guess mm. from a viewer's point of view watching the show, it's made to look like that. Yeah. But I guess, Caitlin, yeah. the thing I just want to sort of remind you and the rest of New Zealand is that they edit the shit out of this show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Many examples of where I've had a conversation with Melissa, uh, the, the perfect one was to do with the honesty box all the way back on the honeymoon mm. um, when it showed Melissa in tears over me saying that, oh, if I was in a pub, would I go up to you? And I said, honestly, I said, I wouldn't. But that was the error of my ways in the past relationships, being very judgmental on the way someone looks, for example, where the whole purpose of me going to the show was to change who I am, to go deeper and find that emotional connection. And she was actually in tears that I took offense to her asking if I came to the experiment for the right reasons, if I came there to find someone instead of just further my career, which I think a producer put that in her ear. And I said, if that's what you think of me, I may as well leave now because I said, I don't want to be judged on that. I said, I'm my own person. Yes, I have a career like you've got a career, but it doesn't make me who I am as a person. So I said, I was a bit offended by it, and I'm happy to say that, but they showed it in a way that she was upset that I wouldn't walk up to her in a bar and acknowledge her. Sorry, sorry just to jump in here, uh, Caitlin, but Bryce, we've sort of talked about whether this is actually what happens on the show or not, because... Dom and I speculate that maybe they say, all right, so what do you think of your uh, bride? You've only just met her a few minutes ago. What do you think? And you say, oh, you know, she's great and whatever. And they go, oh, okay. And they, they dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and go, yeah, but she's maybe not the type of person you'd normally date. And then you're like, well, yeah, maybe not. And all of a sudden they wear you down, delete anything that you said at the start. And they take their one last grab where they finally got you, uh, unfortunately, with your pants down and said something that you normally wouldn't have said <laughs> straight off the bat. Yeah, you're pretty close to the mark there. I think the way that they go about it, um, from what my sort of view is, that they ask you the same question, 
but they ask it in probably five or six different ways to get different answers out of you. So the nucleus of the question is there, but the way they do it is just path A, path B, path P, uh, path C. So I guess you can put yourself in a situation where you do get caught off guard thinking, hang on, I've answered this question. Maybe it's a completely different question, but it's actually the same question being asked differently. They're very good at their job, They're these producers. I'll give them the credit they deserve and much respect from someone that's in media going through this whole experiment for three months. I'm like, you guys are the best in the business at what you do. Like, congratulations. You, you're tops at your job. Well, he's having not seen the show, Bryce seems reasonable to me. I like the guy. Yeah. He seems great. I've got no complaints. Why are you mad at Bryce? I mean, <laughs> there, there are a couple things that I'm still questioning, though. Yeah, you had a couple of okay, questions yeah. from yeah. the show. She's, she's still mad, mate. I'm sorry. She's still mad. Oh, don't apologise <laughs> for Katie. She's your friend. You don't even know her. <laughs> this is on behalf of me and uh, my three other female flatmates that invested too much time into the show. Um, but the whole cheating scandal that happened, your mate, was it Jason? Uh, yeah, on the show, Jason, yeah. yeah no, but your oh. friend from home in Can was it Canberra, and he caught up with oh, Sam, yeah, yeah. and uh, then, yeah. Yeah. yeah, are you, like, are you still friends with him? So pretty much Jason, his friend, um, kind of outed him for seeing this girl on the outside, mm -hmm. and it happened a couple of times, eh? Like, there was, when you guys went home for the home visits, he obviously mentioned it on screen, but then he'd also rang Sam, who's another contestant who wasn't on the show at the time she'd left. They'd caught up in a bar and then he had um, hit her up about that too. Well, and it got back a, to the group. This is a friend of Bryce's. Yeah. Mm. Well, was he a friend anymore? <laughs> no, so he's definitely not a friend anymore. And I look, mm. I would never say he was my best mate, how the show made out. Uh, him and I did a show together with another female in Canberra um, here in Australia and a breakfast show. And, Look, he was a work colleague that basically, I'd lived in Canberra for three months. So 12 weeks ain't a long time. And I'll be honest, I didn't really have many friends in Canberra apart from work colleagues. So when COVID came in and they said, oh, look, you're going to have to do everything Sydney, Canberra based. You need to use people from now. And my family live on the Gold Coast up in Queensland and in Melbourne where I am now. So mm. I kind of have to use a lot of people from work and no disrespect to them, but they don't know me from a bar of soap apart from what they hear in a radio studio in a morning or an afternoon. So kind of the whole context around this secret girlfriend situation was I actually threw myself under the bus at the dinner party when it got brought up about this rumour because it was never true. And Rebecca's actually come out on a joint interview that she did with me on a radio show here about a week or two ago saying that she was told by producers to say that I had a girlfriend because – they needed a storyline. Wow! Um, if, if none of this, if none of this stuff is is true, then it, it, you've got to be just the the unluckiest guy in the world. It does mm. seem like a massive, massive yeah. pile on in your direction. And also defamation as well. Like, couldn't you turn around and be like, "Hey, no, but I'll you put sign myself... up for a reality show." Yeah, I suppose yeah, you'd then... give away all. Yeah, maybe. Do you just give away any sort of right? Because they can't just be going around trashing your character and making up stories that are completely false. Because you have to then go on and continue to live your life in the public sphere after this. Well, they've done a bloody good job of it to at least attempt to. I'll give them that. And I think over here, I don't know what it's like in New Zealand. I haven't been over there. But um, the media in Australia jump on board any bit of negative media that's possible to ramp it up to make themselves look better. So I think it's been a classic case of, hey, we've got a media guy on Australia's biggest show. Um, we can get talking points out of it. And there's no doubt about it. Our relationship that Melissa and I had created a lot of talking points. And... We were so busy with publicity here and heard phonotopics are coming up left, right, and said, oh, what do you think of Bryce and Melissa? What do you think of this? They've done this. Bryce has said that. And I can respect that's what the show is there to do. It's there to generate conversations in the kitchens, around your lounges and whatnot. But at the same time, too, I think they've got to sort of put forward the human being trait because, as you just said perfectly, we have to go on and continue our normal lives without the support of a production company, without the support of Panel 9 here in Australia. And other networks around the world and we're left to fend for ourselves. And I guess the fortunate thing for Melissa and I is that we actually genuinely fell in love on a TV show against all the odds. Um, God forbid a media person fall in love on a TV show. It shouldn't be allowed to happen, I know, but it did. And we're very happy and we're living together and we've got plans for the future. Yeah, Katie, what do you think about that? Like if, if Melissa's okay with everything, why are you and your flatmates still not okay? Well, this... 
just to give you context, we've just finished the last episode that we've just seen is um, your final vow. So we haven't got to the final dinner party and all that kind of stuff at the moment. But yeah. I don't, yeah, there's just like a couple of like, like her family even as well. When you guys talk to her family in the cinema, like how did that go down when you met them for the first time? Because they were not yeah, a fan. So that was... <laughs> they were not a fan. <laughs> Yeah, so that was probably one of the biggest stitch-ups of the whole experiment for us because we were in this cinema in Sydney for about half an hour. Uh, my mum clarified any girlfriend rumour that was on the outside and said it's not true. I'm a bit of a mummy's boy. I speak to my mum regularly almost every day, sometimes twice a day, and my mum knows everything about me. Plus, uh, Melissa and I FaceTime each other's parents every day against the rules of the experiment. So uh, we actually knew that that was coming. Uh, they showed our parents the three previous commitment ceremonies and they said, well, we've seen these guys in real life on FaceTime. It's nothing from what you've showed us at commitment ceremonies. And my mum actually had a go at the producers, God lover, um, and turned around the producers were kind of like, you know what, shut up, we're doing it this way. And yeah, quite rude to us. So that was the point in the experiment that I sort of turned on the production and thought, you know what, don't treat my family like a piece of shit. If you're going to do that, I'll treat you like a piece of shit as well. And I actually ended up calling the police on the production itself towards the end of it to try and get us out of there because the way I saw it was they were holding us against our will because Melissa and I requested on numerous occasions to remove ourselves from the show and the production and they wouldn't allow it. So in any walk of life, if you resign or leave a job, you're allowed to mm-hmm. within a couple of weeks, but not on Married at First Sight, you can't. Do you reg- do you, I know you found Melissa on the show and you're still happy together, but do you regret going on the show? Such a hard question because of what I found on the show with Melissa. Um, No, I don't, but put it this way, I would strongly recommend ever doing anything like it to anyone else that would want to consider doing it. Would you do anything different if you did it again? Yeah, I wouldn't be as brutally honest in the beginning. That's (laughs) probably the worst trait of mine. Um, I thought, look, if I, my whole thing was, I've seen previous seasons and sat back and watched people and thought, you know what? You're fake. You're just you're making yourself look at a national TV show for your benefit afterwards. You're acting. So I'm like, I just want to go in there, be myself, be 100% truthful. I was. Uh, people claim I wasn't, but I know what was true. Uh, people on the outside who know me better than anyone know what was true, and they saw a true indication of me. Look, I'm not an angel. I don't proclaim to be the perfect male or human being. I know I've got traits that are bad, and I'm outspoken and tell it how it is, but... It's who I am. Um, do I need to change some things or tweak them slightly? Yeah, probably. And since meeting Melissa, that's happened. She's definitely changed me and made me into a better person. And that's why I've fallen in love with this girl because we've kind of bought sides out of us that we didn't both know. Melissa is a lot louder. If she wasn't away at work at the moment, I'd have her on here and introduce you guys because I think you'd love her and who she actually is now because she's definitely loud and outspoken. And she's more than happy to put me in my spot. So, um yeah, it's a whole different world to what we've all seen on the show, and that's the whole idea of doing this podcast. But but, being, but, yeah, but, yeah, but well, wait, wait a minute, because uh, you've you've won up me and Randall but are you just gaslighting us? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wouldn't know how to gaslight anyone. I don't know what it means for crying out loud. <laughs> Doesn't mean you don't know how to gaslight if you don't know what it means. But uh, how, have you had any offers from mental health support from Channel Nine or the producers mm. since then? Because hearing all of this, I mean, I haven't seen the show. All I've seen are the articles about you. Uh, left, right, and centre of you being the biggest douchebag. You're like the most the lived. most hated man in Australia this uh, year, I'd say so. So, far. giving you the benefit of the doubt and uh, and believing your story, um, where you were set up to look worse than you actually are, have you been given the mental health support that you should deserve? So, yeah, I want to make it very clear. During the show, we are given that mental support from psychologists. Um, we have a wellness manager that's part of the production. Afterwards, uh, Melissa and I declined to use her personal reasons that we won't go into um we just didn't feel we had a great relationship with her and she wasn't there filming where the show psychologist was independent still contracted to the production but she was there at every dinner party every commitment ceremony and actually saw how it all played out so she had a good understanding of our relationship as well and she's been great for us personally we don't speak to anyone from production anymore we have no interest in it um but we've also been set up with an independent psychologists uh, individually. We've got a different one, so it's not a conflict of mm, yeah. what I'm saying to yeah. what Melissa's saying. And, um, yeah, we receive weekly help at the moment. So we are sort of being looked after. Uh, look, from a personal point of view, I'm pretty headstrong. Yeah. Um, I think we saw that on the show, but 
even going through something like what we did on Married at First Sight can, I guess, bruise you to some degree. Mm. And it's definitely yeah. played an effect on me. Um, we don't sleep the best at night, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, it's one of those things that over time, those kind of mental scars will heal. And yeah, I've, I've been involved in some mental health charities and organisations prior to going on the show with my radio career. And I'm in the middle of conversations with one here in Australia and jumping on board to promote that. Because I think a big part of my backstory that never got shown was uh, one of my best mates uh, sadly passed away to suicide pr- prior to the show. And that was a big reason for me to sort of go in and to change who I was as a person. And mm. unfortunately, it never fit my storyline. So a big part of me for doing the show was to change who I am as a person. And if I can make a difference and Melissa as well at the same time going forward from a show like this, regardless of how we were portrayed, um, we'll do everything we can to help people with poor mental health. Wow. Katie, Katie, you've had um, time with Bryce. When your flatmates go, oh, that Bryce, he's a, he's a piece of shit. What do you now say? Don't believe everything you see on the screen. Oh, you maybe. got it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But yeah. Oh, I have to wait for the oh, dinner party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've still got two more eps to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah, Bryce, will you come back on with us at some point once we get to the final episodes? Yeah, absolutely. You guys are great. I guess uh, you're a lot better than the Australian media that just put <laughs> shit in me for five minutes. So yeah, that's but, good. but that's because the three of us haven't really seen it. Maybe yeah. if we'd watched the whole season, we'd be like, you piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, we appreciate you fronting up. We, pre- we appreciate him fronting up, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, normally the villain on the show is the one that you don't get access to because they just don't want anything to do with it. And maybe it, it says a lot about if you're going to be on a reality TV show, being careful about the first few moves you make because all of a sudden they can start putting you in a certain uh, box and then you become that character for the rest of the show regardless of uh, how you behave. Maybe. Like when they tried to make you the vain guy on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, you that just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, we appreciate... On Netflix, um, Unreal. Yes, yes I love, love that, that show. show. I wish I watched that show before doing Married at First Sight. Yeah, yeah, I love real like uh, behind the scenes of how like producers can orchestrate a show to play out exactly how they want. Yeah, I got told about that show with about two or three weeks after production. We filmed for three months, and God, I wish I watched it before going into that show because it would have been a whole different perception, whole different perception for me going into it. Yeah. Oh, live and learn. Live and learn. Oh, Bryce, um, nice to chat. And um, yeah, we'll have you on next week, maybe, after yeah. we've seen the final episodes. Yeah. Thanks, but Bryce. For, for now, yeah. Caitlin's cool. reserving her judgment. <laughs> Look, I uh, I might have changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, how are you going? And I'm fine with people having judgment on me. That's what the show's there to do. It's there to judge characters on the show. And everyone has a different role to play on the show, like I did. And look, I guess I'm not here to change perception of me. I'm just here to sort of put out how it happened for uh, Melissa and myself on the show and people can have their judgment from that. And if they want to believe what they saw on the show, then respect to that. It was on camera and it's a TV show, but at the same time too, um, I'm happy to tell it how it was. And if I get in trouble for it, uh, so be it. And you got a beautiful wife uh, out of it as well. So like uh, Caitlin said, a couple more eps to go and we'll talk to you next week. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks Bryce. Thanks Bryce. Guys, that is going to be a massive bombshell. It won't involve me, thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Bryce. See ya.